Yes, hello Navid. Welcome on your Puriya platform. And uh, let's start your uh, snap IC engine for your uh, final interview of JKPSC for the post of assistant engineer in public works department. Yes, sir. Let's start. So, uh, Navid, आप मेरे को बताओ what is the what are the main differences between two stroke and four stroke engine? So, in two stroke engine, uh, all the four processes means suction, compression, exhaust. Uh, and one more is there compression these all are completed in two strokes only but in four stroke engine we have a dedicated stroke we have a dedicated i mean we have a dedicated stroke for all of these processes also uh, we can say that the power output we get more in two stroke engine because uh, in case of two stroke engine for every one revolution of crank we have one power stroke but in case of four stroke engine for every two revolutions of crank there is one power stroke so power is more in case of two stroke engine so what kind of engines are more efficient so more so four stroke will be more efficient than two stroke because there are losses in two stroke engine so where the are losses... the application of two stroke engines where we use two stroke engines uh, so particularly in two wheelers we use two stroke where the capacity of engine i mean uh... you have seen uh, two stroke engine in any of the two wheelers So earlier there used to be two stroke engine so now where we are using those two stroke engines currently sir so earlier we used to use uh, we used to have two stroke diesel engines in ships also but uh, right now i'm not sure maybe we have shifted to four stroke i think mm -hmm. we are using now four stroke diesel engine yes so sir what are the criteria on what basis actually we choose a two stroke engine they are not more efficient as compared to four stroke But the Then power output is more, and they are lighter. Lighter means power to weight ratio will be low. Mm -hmm. No, no, power to weight ratio will be high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, tell me that what is the process, normal process of combustion in petrol engine? How combustion progress actually in petrol engine? How combustion takes place? Yes. yes. Uh, in petrol engine uh, the combustion takes place at constant volume so basically we have a uh, air fuel mixture is supplied to the combustion chamber mm -hmm. and uh, we know that petrol has got good vaporization characteristics so it easily forms vapors and gets homogeneously mixed with the air and when we ignite this spark uh, we can say that all the mixture is burnt instantaneously you heard so, about ricardo theory he has given some different stages of combustion So can you tell me some more about those stages of combustion? Yes, sir. First stage is ignition lag. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, which word? What is that ignition lag? Ignition lag first when we will ignite the spark. Mm -hmm. So combustion will not take place instantaneously, but there will be some delay. This depends upon the fuel properties of fuel. So mm -hmm. that delay period is known as ignition lag. Mm -hmm. After that, the next stage is propagation of flame. Flame will start propagating, and finally there is. No, no. Second stage is our combustion stage, mm -hmm. and third stage is. I think, sir, third stage is propagation of flame only. Mm -hmm. So, main three stages are there for petrol engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, you heard about uh, ignition advance, Navid. Ignition advance. So we ignite this spark before the. Uh, Why? What is the advantage? What advantage? Advantage we get when we go with ignition advance. Sir, I have studied about it, but I am not able to recall it right now. Mm -hmm. okay. So, can you tell me some of the latest development in the petrol engine technology? So, initially we used for if we talk of fuel injection system, initially we used to have carburetor. Then now mm -hmm. it has been replaced by MPFI, multi-point fuel injection system. So, and uh, how it works that MPFI system and how it is different from conventional injection system? So, in MPFI system, uh, there is we have uh, what, what we can we have multiple ports. That's why they name multi-point. We have multiple ports, and these are located at the intake valve of each cylinder. Mm -hmm. and uh, fuel will be supplied sir as per the engine requirement uh, basically we use a number of sensors and all these sensors will give the information to the ecu electronic control unit 
for example uh, when we press the accelerator paddle mm-hmm. so throttle will open more and throttle sensor will give this information to the ecu and based on that information ecu will decide how much fuel we need to supply fine just tell me uh, some of the advantages we are getting using npfi system as compared to conventional induction by carburetor so advantage will be sir fuel efficiency will improve because we are supplying the fuel as per the engine requirement only also mm-hmm. the emissions will improve because the unburned fuel will be reduced and uh, we can say don't you feel fuel will get less time to mix with air because in carburetor first we are carrying out the mixing and that fuel is moving uh, to the induction pipe yes, finally sir. the mixture is entering into the combustion center i feel then uh, there will be better uh, chances of getting the uh, mixture uniform mixture sir mixing we can say that will be better but uh the mixture that we actually need means the quantity of the fuel that will not be that accurate if we use carburetor it will be more accurate in mpfi system mm-hmm. theek hai what is volumetric efficiency how we measure volumetric efficiency so volumetric efficiency it's the ratio of actual volume entering into the combustion chamber to the suction volume or stroke volume अच्छा so mm-hmm. driver will lose control over st- steering means the vehicle will continue skidding in the direction in which it was initially moving so driver will have no control over the steering but what abs does it prevents the wheel from locking so even though we go for a rough braking still the driver will have control over the vehicle it will not allow the wheels to lock so skidding gets reduced uh, more uh, driver will have more control over the vehicle as that's one advantage of using abs you know in uh, public works department also if there is some uh, water uh, is collected due to some uh, low level then we use some centrifugal pump clumped uh, clumped with the that those kind of diesel engines only to remove the water from low lying areas so uh, you had about uh, the uh, space, uh, this uh, your cc cubic capacity of engine yes sir so uh, tell tell me some of the uh, important you know uh, parameter which are uh, there for engine like the brake power how we measure brake power experimentally how we measure indicated power okay and uh, how we measure that cubic capacity of the engine so brake power for that we can use simply use a brake dynamometer mm-hmm. and uh, coming to indicated powers are actually we have or test for yes. calculating the indicated power and that most test, test, test we use for multi cylinder engine only, uh, like yes, scotia having only for multi cylinder engine. engine then how you will measure for a single cylinder diesel engine for single cylinder we use motoring test that's applicable motoring for test. both single cylinder as well as multi cylinder uh, so tell me brief about that motoring test now how we conduct that test uh, so initially what we will do we will have all the cylinder uh, we will have the engine running right uh, so with the help of brake dynamometer we can calculate the brake power after that we will cut the fuel supply so none of the cylinders will be working mm-hmm. now we will use a motor for running that engine mm-hmm. and so if we look at the relation we have indicated power is equal to brake power plus frictional power now since indicated power will be zero so brake power will be equal to frictional power so whatever power now we are using in running the engine that will be frictional power only so we have the brake power initially calculated and now we have cal- calculated the brake power so difference of two will give us the indicated power okay so uh, cdn number aapne suna hai na yes sir so it's a rating for diesel fuels based on their nt knock properties so what are the reference fuels to measure the cdn number uh, so for diesel first is the first is uh, n uh, n cdn and one uh, another is alpha methyl naphthalene 
which are having CTA number of 100 and 0 respectively. So how you can define, like suppose you are having a diesel fuel which is having CTA number 50, what it means? Okay, it's 50. Yes, sir. Actually, how we calculate uh, whatever fuel for whatever fuel we have to calculate the CTA number, we run that fuel in a test engine and we mm -hmm. note its knocking properties. Mm -hmm. Then we will prepare a mixture of n cetane and alpha methyl uh, naphthalene. So such a mixture that will give same properties, uh, same knocking properties as that of the test fuel. So in this fuel, whatever will be the percentage of n cetane, uh, n cetane by by volume only so that will represent its CTA number okay can you tell me some of the air standard assumptions if so we treat air as a working fluid and air is treated as an ideal gas mm -hmm. uh, combustion we replace combustion by heat addition from external source similarly exhaust is replaced by heat rejection and specific heat, uh, CP and CV, they are assumed to be constant for air. Okay, uh, Navid, what do you feel? What are the reasons for uh, the uh, difference in the uh, ideal efficiency, the air standard efficiency and actual efficiency? So in calculating the air standard efficiency, we assume the value of gamma is constant. Mm -hmm. But in actual case, what happens, CP and CV will be changing with temperature. So mm -hmm. the value of gamma, CP by CV will actually decrease in actual case. Mm -hmm. So the actual efficiency will be less than the air standard efficiency because the gamma values decrease. What about ideal and air standard efficiency? Both are same, equal? Ideal and air standard. Sir, I'm not sure about it. What about Carnot and air standard? So car not engine are you talking mm. about car not engine car not engine efficiency and air standard efficiency car not engine efficiency is independent of the working fluid yes sir so, that's independent of working. so then uh, what is the difference between the car not efficiency and the air standard efficiency when both the engines operating between same kind of uh, temperature limits the car not efficiency will be more because uh, in car not engine the heat addition will take place at constant temperature means mm -hmm. the uh, mean temperature of heat addition and mean temperature of heat rejection. They will be equal to the maximum and minimum temperature. But if we talk of auto cycle, mm -hmm. there the heat addition and rejection is not taking place at constant temperature. So the mean value of the mean temperature of heat rejection and if we talk of mean temperature of heat addition, that will be less than the maximum value. So its efficiency will come out to be low, although they are working both between same temperature limits. But uh, the mean temperature of heat addition will not be same in that. It will be more in Carnot efficiency, so it will be more efficient also. Okay. Okay, Navid, let me provide you the feedback uh, now. Yes, sir. Uh, your understanding is looking fine, Navid. You are looking, uh, uh, your delivery style is comfortable. You are looking calm and very effectively you answered most of the question. So yes, I started with basic two stroke, four stroke, some of the basic differences. Two stroke engine, you know, earlier, yes, we used uh, them in uh, two wheelers also, but nowadays you can, you will find two stroke engine yes, in lawn movers. Okay. Lawn movers. So, lawn okay, movers. Mein hota hai. And, you know, two stroke engines are obviously they are uh, the light weighted engine because we are getting the power in every revolution of the crankshaft. Mm -hmm. So, yes, theoretically, sir. the power is twice of the diesel, uh, the four stroke engine, but practically mm -hmm. the power is only 30% more than yes, the sir, 30%. Digital losses. So, but yes, nowadays we replaced actually. In earlier, they were used in uh, marine engines also, but nowadays they are replaced by four stroke diesel engine. Four stroke engine. Due to more, you know, development in the four stroke engine technology as compared to the two stroke engine technology. Go through some details about the Ricardo theory in what sequence combustion takes place in petrol engine and okay. similarly the stages of combustion in diesel engine. Some of the stages you mentioned, those are fine. You know, ignition advance we carry out just to get the combustion close to the TDC. If, if you are suppose if you are if you are initiating the combustion, if you are initiating the spark close to TDC, so that when the combustion will begin, combustion will begin in the expansion. After stroke, some time. During the yes, sir. So the pressure which we are going to get that will be lesser. But if you are initiating the mm. combustion before the piston reaches TDC, so combustion is going to begin slightly before before the TDC. So at that instant, 
the expansion is not taking place compression is taking place so due to that the pressure which you are going to get that will be much higher as compared to the pressure which we are going to get in yes, second sir, yes sir what the idea have yes sir yes sir so ignition advance we carry out just to get the higher high peak pressure. pressure what you can say peak pressure and peak temperature and so that work output will be higher okay Mm, yes, sir, so that exactly. is going to increase our work output. But why not high ignition advance? Because when we go with very high ignition advance, that is going to increase the locking tendency. Mm. So we cannot go for a ignition advance more than ten to fifteen degree. You know, MPFI you mentioned, but you know, MPI FI may or conventional in induction may. There is a one major uh, difference, and that you can highlight. Conventional induction may क्या होता है? There are different cylinders. Suppose there are four cylinders arranged in line. So some suction is going to take place. So due to the inertia of the charge, okay. So the cylinder which is very much near to the pipe, okay, the carburetor pipe, so it will be able to inhale a large amount of charge. But the cylinder which is far away, or at last, so for that the charge induction capacity will be lesser. Less. So that uh, the different cylinders. Okay, their volumetric efficiencies, their power output will be different. Yes, so sir. uniformity of the power will not mm. be there. That is a major issue with the conventional uh, induction system. When we are going with MPFI, so the uh, each and every cylinder equal power they are going to Same produce. Same power, yes, sir. Okay, the control of the charge will be better. Economy of the fuel will be better. Complete combustion will be there. So those are the advantages you can measure. Carnot cycle is an ideal cycle. Ideal means a cycle which is internally as well as externally reversible. Reversible. Okay. So obviously the ideal cycle efficiency is the highest one because that depends on the temperature limit only. Then second, we are having air standard efficiency. So air standard cycles are not ideal cycles. They are only internally reversible cycles. They are only partially reversible, but you can say they are not complete reversible. Carnot cycle is a complete reversible cycle. So go to the idea now. Why yes, there is sir, a difference yes, between the ideal mm -hmm. efficiency? So the air standard F petrol efficiency, air standard diesel efficiency is not the ideal efficiency. Ideal efficiency is the efficiency of Carnot engine. Carnot engine, yes sir. Okay, I think these are the things I asked you. Cytan number also I asked you. So a fuel which is having 50 Cytan number, it means it's uh, the combustion characteristics are very much similar to the uh, mixture of 50% uh, uh, Cytan and 50% yes, alpha, alpha methane. So something like that you can define. Okay, now the overall your performance is very good. Uh, your technical understanding you, is looking very good. So I feel if you revise some more very effectively, you will be able to deliver in your final interview. It's very good, Navid. Uh, so very Thank less you. student actually answer all the question and in a very correct manner. So it's good, Navid. So keep it up, the Thank good you, work sir. and good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.